Moving on now to Team DSM women's team, which had a lot more sick. Well, yeah, I, I would say it had a bit more success than the men's team. It certainly had the best sprinter in the world, Lorena Vibas, one of the most valuable contracts in women's cycling with the Tour de France fam coming on board next year. But still a weird season. It's still one that came in like dribs and drabs in terms of wins with a lot in September, October, almost a third of the wins at the end of the year. And all of the Women's World Tour wins, Benji, at the tail end of the year, which was three Women's World Tour wins, two Women's Tour, one at Ronda van Drenthe, like the last race of almost any race in the season on the 23rd of October, very late. Although Giro, Donna stages, three of them, typically they would be uh, World Women's World Tour wins. How would you rate this season, Benji? Because overall, Team DSM are pretty well-rated, mid-pack. They're like, I think, the fourth in the UCI ranking, 18 total UCI wins. What do you rate, make of their season? I think it's a good season. And in all honesty, it's as simple as saying that if you have Lorena Wibbers in your team, you're very likely going to win a lot of sprint stage in the year. And that is shown by the amount of wins that she brings in for this team. The problem is that not that many of them were World Tour. I think only three of those victories were World, were world Tour. There's like, how many in total? Roughly, this is pure guess. I think 14, 13 victories by Wibbers this year, which is quite substantial. And uh, that is compared to that 18 you mentioned. So she's definitely the, the biggest taker when it comes to victories in the squad, as expected. But that doesn't mean that the rest of the squad is terrible corin lebecky rivera had a bit of a uh, a moment where she wasn't racing for a bit during the season if i recall correctly but towards the end she also had a uh, victory in that giro rosa where they had i think a lead out with rivera slash lebecky now doing a lead out for Wibus in the sprint train which is a godlike combination of course but lebecky's leaving I know, that's the problem. And she could have had a few more wins, I think. Um, yeah. There was Norway as well where they couldn't chase it back. But yeah, she's going to Jumbo Visma, which is an interesting transfer. Uh, but yeah, the we'll talk about the transfers in a second. Overall, I would say, well, I wouldn't say everyone would probably agree, this season lent heavily, heavily on Lorena Vibas. Pfeiffer Georgie came on strongly, I guess, at the end of the year and particularly the British national champs, although not for DSM, she, that sort of classics ability, I think she will carry through next year. So yeah, Lauren Vibas, a lot of this team's success hinges on her. In terms of transfers, riders going out, Susanna Anderson, who actually in one of the Norwegian races, she was quite punchy in an uphill drag finish, going second in one of those. Benji already mentioned, Corinne Lebecki, the talented American to Jumbo Visma, her and Voss, pretty lethal combo. <laughs> I can't wait to see that. And Anna Henderson, Vilma Olausen to You Know X, and Julia Sooks retired. But Corinne Lebecki, Benji, I would say clearly their second best rider, particularly when someone who in terms of people that can win races. Certainly when it comes to her uh, winning ability, like you mentioned, she has that uphill sprint and so forth. But I wouldn't say that the transfers coming in are uh, not necessarily replacing that. The thing about Corinne Lebecki is that while Wibbers is more the pure sprinter, Lebecki was able to take on hillier sprints. Same for Susanna Anderson, like you mentioned. And um, in all honesty, it is a loss. That's quite certain. And not only is it a loss for the team, it's say another competitor in an opposing team, which is not that great. But I do still believe that Wibbers is their most valuable asset and keeping her is their uh, priority. And when other people leave, they can try and replace that. And I think they've actually got quite a few good incoming transfers. First of all, Charlotte Cole, I think you've mentioned her before on this podcast, coming from Next Gen Racing. NXTG is a short name for that. I believe that she's a, a pretty good sprinter, isn't she? Yeah, I think she's really good and adds a bit of, I guess, when Vibas isn't on or Vibas can't race the entirety of the year and there's a lot of sprints in Women's World Tour. You know, Balois, a ladies tour, taking out a win there. GP Disberg taking out a win there. Just adds more UCI wins. Uh, in terms of better competition this year, 22 years old, she came 10th at Shelter Parade. Listen, that's not anything to write home about particularly, but as I said, 22 Looking pretty good. 14th at Trentha and some other placings in classics-y live sprint courses. So, yeah, I'm keen to see how she goes. 
In terms of the other riders, there's Leah uh, Kurunier coming from Arkea Pro Cycling Team. She's a cyclocrosser, 20 years old as well. And so she's in, been in racing a fair few U23 races. Uh, but yeah, not huge results on the road yet. But I guess maybe she can focus on cyclocross a little bit more talent. She won the La Grandville cyclocross uh, the other week or last month, actually. Any other transfers at note, Benji? There's Francesca Barale. I am into uh, Francesco Barale when it comes to her uh, results at the junior level, but also oh, she's only after doing the junior level, she also rode at the end of the season Trivoli Varesini women's race. And in that race, she came a solid 12th spot. And that's not against junior riders. That was against riders that are in World Tour teams, like AR Monix had their team there, Volker had their team there, Sierra won that race ahead of Garcia and Rachel Nealon, so those are not terrible riders, certainly. If she can follow a peloton like that and be in that first few groups in the 12th position at the age that she is at, which is still at 18, then she can grow out to be a solid rider in the future. I think that's a, a pretty damn strong rider, and she, uh, yeah, she's proving herself in the junior ranking, and hopefully she can do so in the... Uh, World Tour ranking in the future as well. The last rider that they've signed is Elise Juchen. She is, again, another really young rider, Netherlands from, uh, from the way, Netherlands. Yes. Elisa Ayen. <laughs> I it was I a bit too much. <laughs> to even Benji couldn't bear that one. Elisa Ayen, uh, 18 years old. She came fourth in World Championships road race, junior road race, uh, third in the U- European Women's Championships junior ITT. It's like an all-round rider. When you think of the riders there, like Zoe Backstedt won the World Champs Junior Road Race this year, and she is very highly touted. The British rider, uh, 17, like she wins everything. <laughs> she, I think she won the Essen Cyclocross last month too. So, yeah. I've got a question. Yes, sir. Like, the SM is signing Charlotte Cole. We know that she's a very talented rider from the results she's had already. But um, why on a one-year contract? Is it a one year? Yes, it's a one year contract until 2022, according to PCS at least. That's a bit. I mean, maybe, maybe it is one year. I don't know. Uh, maybe it doesn't really make sense. Wouldn't she want more years? And why wouldn't why wouldn't DSM want to lock her in for another few years? But yeah, I can see it's a one year deal. Maybe it's a prove it deal. They've got they've already got Lorena Vibas, so they don't need like a need a top top sprinter but yeah i don't really know that's a that's a fair point benji maybe it's a budget thing maybe it's a uci cycle thing i don't know anyway going on we've done their transfers going on to the sort of teams we'd expect dsm to put together first for the cobble races and this was a lot easier actually when they had uh corin lebecky on the team because you could say rvv like you can just she's a lock for that i think They got Megan Jastrab, the young American. I remember she won the junior uh, champs, I think, in Harrogate back in 2019. I'd expect her to take a step up. But I think Pfeiffer Georgie Benji is really going to step into a leadership role in the Belgian Classics. She seems to be good in miserable conditions. (laughs) She's been training loads from what I can see. I think her alongside Florchi Mackay are the two main leaders. I believe those are indeed the two candidates I'd push forward as well. The thing about this team is that in those races like Egen Dwevelgem and, uh, well, those kind of races, OxyClean, that's where I'd also end up putting uh, the big one, Lorina Wibis, because if it comes down to a sprint, you've got that option then. And we saw that at the end of the season, was it? Brenta, she got over the Berg. She got over the Van Berg. The Van Berg multiple times and in a proper way to where she had her entire train with her. So it wasn't a... Uh, a hard time to get over those climbs either she ended up getting that victory pretty easily in the end so my question here is like we've spoken a lot throughout the last couple of years well the last year and a half because we haven't been doing this podcast for 10 years but you know we was can do able do you see it happening she should like she really should benji there's no there's no real excuse not to like as long as she has the core of pfeiffer georgie florchie mckay and Francisca Koch, and maybe you send Lippert as we Lippert will probably go as well, just in case. That core should be able to bring you back. And the last climb is like 36 Ks from the finish, maybe not as far. I don't know. She it's something that I think she should try, Benji. And what I saw at Trenta, it's worth trying. And if it doesn't work, 
I guess the problem is, the problem is Benji, you send five of Georgie Francisco Lippert with her. If you drop all of those riders back and you can't make it back, back now you've got no chance and no chance for points. So do you leave Lippert in the sort of group ahead like they, they sort of had her there this year? I don't know. It depends on how close the group is until fourth. So it really depends on the situation in the race. And I think it also depends on which people are in the front group and which people are in the peloton. If it's a peloton of like 10 people and it's a front group of like eight people, then it's going to be harder to get back with that peloton group because you'll have less teams to uh, crawl back. But in all honesty, I agree that Lorena Wibbs should take on Hendo Evelham. I think she got third in uh, the junior one for certain in the past where it was won by Georgie Pfeiffer. So a fun fact for you there, back in 2017. So uh, a bit of a DSM party now, looking back. But uh, in all honesty, I think that fits. Yeah, and I think that call, which we saw at Drenta, like five DSM in the last group of seven, uh, Suzanne Anson was one of them, but she's out the door now. I think that's quite a good call for the classics on my assumption that five for Georgie is going to really take the next step up. In terms of the Ardennes, the person that needs to take the step up, I think, is Liana Lippert. We saw her. She was very strong in the course in a punchy finish. Now, we haven't seen, like, at the flesh, uh, flesh, and she just hasn't been as good. Like, it was, she had that big breakout win at Cadell's, but she's not consistent in, like, Strade, Omloop, et cetera. Not like we're used to seeing Ludwig sort of top five, top six, all of these races. She's not like that. Like, of course, as I said, very strong. But uh, the European World uh, – not European World Championships, the European Continental Championships <laughs> second. Yeah. Vuelta, she was really consistent. Do you think, Benji, she didn't do Amstel? That's yeah, what's she, really uh, weird. She seemed to focus on the cobble races this year more and ended up doing her last race in the preseason before that lot of touring and ladies tour. At La Flèche Wallonne, so not Amstel, not LBL. Last year she did do those races, and she got relatively close. She got second in Brabant's Appel, eighth in La Flèche last year, and also tenth in LBL. So those races fit her. I actually don't know why she didn't do those races. Perhaps it's a focus on RVV this time around, but I think uh, she should be doing hill classics more than cobble classics. Yeah, I agree with you. Amstel, I really would like to see her there next year. I think Carberg suits her so much. And she didn't even do it last year either. That is bizarre. That's really... Anyway, I'm shooketh. I'm shook by that. But that's who we would have, I would have at least, as their leader uh, at those sort of races. Florty Mackay as well at Amstel or Brabant. She's quite, she's quite a strong rider. And then, to be honest, they're putting together a lot of riders trying to make that squad. They don't have Labu? a deep squad. Yeah, I was going to say Labu. She is... got sixth on Flesh, I think, this year. And uh, pretty close in Amsel. So if she can't fit in a leader's role, which I'd argue co-leader fits her with the results that she put up this year in this squad, then she can still support the other person, Lippert, if it comes down to it. But I dare to put her in a decent position this year. She's been consistent throughout the year. That seventh spot in Giro d'Italia, Internazionale Femminile as well, strong climbing there. So all that combined, I'd put her definitely near the top or at their uh, their Hill Classics team on this one. Yeah, and she's 23 years old, still really young, moving up and improving a lot year on year, second, like seconds here and there. And I think the TDFF is, which we're, Going to move to in a second. Their stage race is Benji. I think she should be their GC leader, and I think she should go for T5. I think the long climbs will suit. Do you think that's unrealistic? I think she's also her best, their best candidate for GC in the Tour de France Femme. Uh, we saw, I think, both Labou and Lippert doing the Giro Rosa this year, and Labou ended up higher in GC, seemed to be the better candidate on the climbs, and is not actually terrible at time trials either. I think she got sixth in the mountain time trial, but that's not representative of a flat one, really. I think she got relatively close on other ITTs, though, so I guess she's not terrible at it for certain. Fifth in the uh, ITT of the women's tour. And all that combined, that's what you need to become a GC rider. And Lippert is just not as good when it comes to ITTs, it seems, based on her results. And next to that, I'd argue that Labou is just a better fit. And... Honestly, I think so. it's pretty cool as a French rider as well, as leader in a 
in the Tour de France Femmes, so I'm looking forward to see her as GC leader. Is she good enough to be going for GC compared to the leaders that we see in other teams, or would you expect that she would choose a KOM or QOM? Uh, I think she's good enough to go for T5. I think if you're on the fringe of T10, then maybe uh, like Evita Muzic, I think, on... Uh, on FD, uh, FTJ, Nouvelle Aquitaine, Futuroscope, I think she should probably go for polka dots, but Labou seems good enough. She should go for T5, and I think we'll see a surprise. I think we we don't know what will happen with like a long climb at the back end of the race, and I think it's worth it for her. Megan Yastrab, I think they're banking on a lot. As I said, talented young American, 19 now. She was did the team pursuit in the Madison, so again, not really – she did no racing in Europe before the Olympics – and then came and did a couple of stage races and DNF to actually love Welter first stage. Uh, the Therese is a challenge. So they'll be expecting a better year from her. And she has, maybe she picks it up as well. But the big icon or the big focus of the year will be Lorena Vibers, stage one, Shams Elise, TDFF, getting that first yellow jersey. They're the favourites to get it. Yeah. But the train, Benji, I think they've got to send Lippert because she's quite. She's quite fast as a lead out, I think. I think Lippert is part of the train and they just got to go all in on that. Yeah, I'm curious whether Charlotte Cole could be part of that Weber's train True. at some point during the year. I'm not sure whether sending her instantly as part of the train in the Tour de France Femme is uh, great at that age. But in all honesty, if it fits, why not? It could definitely uh, be a thing. One curious thing, though, like... We see that the first stage in the uh, Tour de France Femme is a sprint stage, but halfway to the stage, there's a KOM point on the flat. Why not also go for KOM with Wibbers? Yeah, or Leah Kirchman, like someone like that, or Yastrab, like Yastrab getting the breakaway, as I said. Like, why not? Um, they got some good solid domestics. Like, Leah Kirchman, she just like consistent T15s in the women's tour and just, just all around the season, really, just consistent results and often a domestique in those races. She's a really valuable rider, Leah Kirkman on DSM. So yeah. I think they'll have a pretty good squad for the uh, TDFF and I think a lot of teams, if you don't have AVV, you don't have the favourite for GC and if you don't have Lorena Vibers, you don't have the favourite for any of the sprints. I think the best overall team sort of team will be like ST Works and Trek, but not much they should be able to do on that first stage, but maybe it'll be break. I don't know. Uh, in terms of other races like... Giro Rosa? Giro like, Rosa. It's not that far uh, from the uh, Tour de France Somme in the schedule. Will some riders from the squad use that Giro Rosa as preparation or will some focus on that? It's hard to know. I don't expect... Labu to be leader for both, I would dare to say. No, I don't know. It's a good point. I think you'd send send Francesca Barale because she's Italian. <laughs> she's Italian. Yeah, that's the, the law. <laughs> that's the law. Uh, <laughs> she has to go, and maybe yeah, I think you give more opportunities at the Giro Rosa. It's two weeks, I think, before it starts on the first day of the Tour de France yeah. uh, men's race. So you need to be putting your eggs commercially in the TDFF basket. And making sure Vibers is primed for that. Maybe you give Lippert GC at the Giro Rosa, or she gets her own chances there because she's going to get less opportunities at the TDFF. Also, if Voss and Longo Borghini and Nivia Doma and co are not focusing as much on the Giro Rosa, then Lippert, who regularly T3s those sort of stages, uh, punchy uphill finishes, then maybe she's the sort of rider that can then break through and take two or three yeah, wins at the Giro Rosa. Next to that, we're talking about Wibbers and Cole perhaps being at the Tour de France Femme. What if he split it up? Wibbers for the uh, Tour de France Femme, Cole being the sprinter in the Giro Rosa as her first opportunity in that race. I feel like that's an option as well if we still have a good enough train at the uh, Tour de France Femme, of course, for Wibbers then. That works. I think that's a pretty pretty good plan but I, I think they might miss i think they're going to really miss corin lebecky i think she adds yeah. she just adds a lot a rider that can just win win races um that being said i think they've got a lot to be excited about dsm they've got a lot of young riders they've got some valuable experienced riders as well and we see upside in piastra barale and labu and charlotte cool and five for georgie there's people who are still improving like 22 years old anyway 
Time for the over-under on wins. Benji, I'm setting it at five and a half because there's more women's world tour races coming online. Vibas didn't pick up a world tour win until like September, October. Five and a half over-under. I think it's going to be more. And I'm doing so because I believe that she's going to win the stage definitely at the Tour de France Femme. I believe stage races like the Simac Ladies Tour fitter as well. I think Charlotte Cole will be able to sign up a... Uh, a proper victory at a World Tour race already this year. I believe that it's going to be more. The combination of uh, Vibis and Cole is going to do a lot for this team, I think. I'm going the under. I think Vibis takes like four. They pick up maybe one or two. One elsewhere. And if it was two, then that'd be over. No, I'm taking the under. Taking the under. Hot takes is Vibis takes yellow on the first stage. Ooh. Other hot takes is that... No, I think Pfeiffer Georgie wins Tour of Flanders. Oh, wow. That's a hot take. <laughs> that's certainly a hot take. <laughs> Didn't see that one coming, but hey, yeah. that's what the hot take section is for. Why are we here? I think Labou Top 5 is the uh, Tour de France fan. Yeah, I think that's a pretty good shout. What other outrageous ones are there? Charlotte Cole wins uh, a stage at the Giro Rosa. Is that back to being Women's World Tour? I think it is. Damn. All right, Benji might have the edge then on this this over under, but yeah, there are hot takes for the team DSM women's team. We hope you enjoyed the preview of them and the men's team for 2022. Let us know what you think will happen with their seasons. We have reviews now or ratings on Spotify for podcasts if that's where you listen. So feel free to give a rating or leave the video a like on YouTube if that's where you listen. But until the next one, ciao.